one of if not the most common question I get is how can I create my own custom stinger transition for my stream this is probably because having your own stinger transition really adds a certain level of production quality to your stream at virtually no cost now lucky enough for you I've included a downloadable project file in the description that has a total of five different custom stinger transitions that I created that you can use on your stream for free all you need to do is drop in your logo and change the colors to fit your brand Additionally, I'll go through the entire process of how to create your own stinger transition from scratch so you can take your own custom spin at it. If that interests you, stick around for the rest of the video. If you only want to know how to work the template file, skip to this timestamp in the video. And as always, I'll include all of the links to everything that I talk about in this video in the description below, as well as links to all of my social medias. If you have any questions, have a problem, or have another suggestion, leave it down in the comments below, swing by the Discord and get help over there, or come by my Twitch stream. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. CST. Now, roll the intro. Okay, so now that you've downloaded the project file and you've opened it, if you wanna create your own custom transition, here's the process of how to do that. Start by creating your own composition. Make sure that it's 1920 by 1080, or if you stream in 720, you can do 720. Make sure the frame rate is 60 and that the duration is exactly two seconds. The background color doesn't matter because we're gonna use transparency. Call it whatever you want. Once you have your composition made, we need two different solid layers. So I'll create a new solid layer. I'll call this color one and then you can choose your color here I'll do a pink color and then we need to create another one so the same process here choose whatever color you want we'll go for maybe a green this time okay so now you have your two different colors that you're gonna use make sure these are your brand colors uh, that's probably what you'll only use here now we need to animate these one at a time. So I will simply hide this top one and we'll start by animating the bottom one. I will hit P on my keyboard to bring up the position keyframes. I'll click this little stopwatch. And then if we zoom out here, just click, hold shift, and I'll drag this one straight up until it's just off the, the screen. Okay, and then we'll go however far in we want it to uh, to take for the animation. So maybe 20 keyframes or 20 frames, and then we'll add a keyframe. Again, we'll click, hold shift, and then we'll drag this down until it's halfway. Uh, if you're having trouble telling where halfway is, you can click on this button here and turn on the proportional grid. And then if we zoom in here, we can see this is one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So this needs to butt up against the end of the third one, uh, right about there. We can zoom in even further just to make sure that we're actually hitting it exactly. So something like that. Now we'll leave this grid up as we animate the second, but as you can see, it just slides down. So let me go ahead and turn back on our green layer. Again, hit P on the keyboard. We'll click on the stopwatch. Make sure we're at the beginning of the timeline. Click, hold shift, and we'll drag this one down. And we want it as well to just be barely off the edge of the screen. And it is. Um, I think it, I think we were just a little bit more on the pink one. So we'll go about right, right there. Then we'll go in 20 frames. And now we want this to meet our other layer in the center so we'll just drag it up until those meet just like that now I can turn this grid off so if we play this back you'll see they come from the top and the bottom meet in the middle all right so let's take this one step further and let's add a little bit of excitement to these keyframes uh, so I'm gonna click and drag I'm gonna highlight these right click on the keyframe assistant I'm gonna hit easy ease I'm gonna do the same thing for these two 
and then now I'll highlight these and I'll hit this button here to go to the graph editor right click on this and make sure you're on you're on the speed graph not the value graph I can click on my handles and then I can just drag these in ever so slightly can do this for the other layer as well okay so then now if we play this back you can see that it's a little bit more exciting uh, they're kind of slow and then they get faster and then they slow back down again and it's just not as linear it's a little bit more appeasing uh, or, or pleasing to the eyes uh, so now all we want to do is come down so if it took 20 frames uh, for those or actually let's let's do this just to make it easier let's drag this keyframe and we'll make these be uh, a 30 frame animation and then on the other end all we need to do is take our keyframes hit control C and control V and then they're gonna be they're gonna be backwards so I'll drag this one a little bit and then I'll drag this one and we can just swap these around so now you can see it animates out with the uh, to the exact same place uh, with the exact same values so so again control C and control V control C go to the end and control V so if we play this whole thing they come in and then they go out come in and go out nice and easy so now we're going to go to the 30 frame mark and this is where we want that logo to come in right so i already have a composition uh, for a logo that's in all of the other transitions that i've made so i'm just going to bring in that composition but all you need to do is drag and drop in your logo uh, whether it be a png or, or whatever um, so i'll just drag in this composition layer here and it's all centered up so i only want this to come in at 30 frame mark so now that they have met in the middle, maybe a little bit before this, what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. So we'll say make this come in five frames before. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to bring up the opacity. I'm going to keyframe this down to 0%. And then at 30 frames, when those two pieces meet, I want it to be hundred percent and so now if we play this back you can see the logo comes in so now let's add a little bit more animation to the logo by hitting s to go to scale we're gonna add a keyframe here and let's make this be about hundred and fifteen percent and then we'll go to the 30 frame mark we'll add a keyframe and we'll set this to be uh, maybe 95%. So now it'll fade in and it'll get a little bit smaller. So just a little bit more animation. And this could actually stand to be a little bit slower, maybe 10 frames. Tell you what, let's easy ease these as well. Go back to our graph editor, we'll click on our handles, drag them in. There you go. So you just got to kind of play around with it to get that how you want. Um, while selecting this layer, let me go back to the opacity. And again, I'm going to drag this out to be 10 frames. And then I'm going to highlight these. Make sure they're easy ease. Go back to our graph editor. And pull those in just a little bit. So there you have it. Now we need to do the exact opposite for this animation, but on the way out. So we can find where our animation starts to leave. So that's at the 30 frame mark. So what we need to do is we need to go back um, to 10 frames, because that's what we used over here and we will copy that keyframe and paste it there.
go here, go back to that keyframe, paste it there. So you can see now it, the opacity, it fades out. All right, so let's grab the scale as well. Just like that. So let's play this whole thing back. Logo comes in, logo goes out, and our colors animate as well. So there you have it. That's uh, the process that I use to create my own custom stingers. Um, if you are only interested in using the ones that are inside of the pack that I've included for download in this, the description, all you need to do is open uh, whichever one you want. Um, again, you'll open up the composition that says your logo here, drag and drop your logo in here, resize it to make sure that the size is appropriate. And then inside of the composition for whichever transition you want to export for your own, you'll see your, your logo here where I have this fake test logo. Then you'll need to find whichever layer or multiple layers say change color. Expand that expand the effects, the fill, and then you can pick and choose whatever color you want here. So if I wanted to change this to maybe a blue, I could do that. And this animation is just a nice little swipe with a, a growing logo and a mask. Um, again, very simple, but that's how that works. Whenever you need to export your logo, or I'm sorry, your Stinger transition, whether it is a custom one or one of the ones I've provided, Go up to composition, hit add to render queue. And then here are the settings that I use. Let me drag this down here. So I have um, a, a template here that's called QuickTime Animations. I use the QuickTime format. You can use AVI, WebM, uh, whatever you want. Just make sure that you have RGB plus alpha or RGBA selected. Otherwise you won't get the transparency that you need for a transition. Then you can hit OK store that wherever you want to and hit render. Okay, so there you have it. Now you've designed or used the template to create your own custom stinger transition for your stream for free. All you need to do now is take that, throw it into an online converter to get it into a WebM format or use any other plugin or converter that you may have to get it into WebM. Go into OBS, go to your transition settings and set your stinger to point to the correct file that you've just downloaded um, as a WebM, set the transition point to be exactly 1000 milliseconds or one second so that the screen is completely covered when the transition takes place. And then you should get something that looks like this. All right, well, if you've liked this video, if you found it helpful, please leave this video a like, uh, subscribe for more. Again, if you have any problems, leave a comment, I'll get back to you. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.